there's this horribly painful feeling sometimes that when we see someone who's more intelligent than we are or outperforming us either in our sadhana or in our service, we feel bad. We feel something's wrong with us. We feel discouraged and maybe even dislike that person because indirectly that person is making us feel bad. That is not where Krishna consciousness is at. As we know, Prabhupada said, the gopis are envious, but envious in a good way, that they take inspiration from one another. Oh, I'm envious of you. You're doing better than I am. I want to do better than you because I want to please Krishna. That's my motive. So the fact is that the people who make us feel bad because they're so good could be a great inspiration to us if we learn to just be satisfied with who we are. Who we are is who we are, and that's who we are, obviously. And by divine arrangement, past activities, we're all in different positions. And the greatest travesty is to not take advantage of our abilities and intelligence that Krishna specifically gave us in order to serve him. By focusing on the abilities and intelligence of others that we don't have and lamenting that we don't have them. And then often when we do that, we don't take advantage of what we do well. And it is really important. Everybody can do something well. Maybe your talent is to teach children, not to teach rocket science to PhD students. That's fine. That's how Krishna created you. Krishna creates men and women differently for different functions, for different purposes. And even amongst women and even amongst men, he creates us differently, and that's good. So one time Prabhupada, you know, the devotee was feeling useless, and Prabhupada said, everyone is useful in the service of Krishna because even if we can only do a little service, it's not the material thing that Krishna's looking at. He's looking at the heart, the sincerity, the dedication, the devotion, the effort. At least we're trying. One time, Prabhupada said, Krishna likes to see us struggle. So just that effort. He likes to see us make that effort. So that's what's important to Krishna. Now, what's important to the world is our address, the car we drive, the labels on our clothes where we work, the position we have at work, and so on. And we can feel really uh, like a failure if we don't live, live up to a certain standard that society has placed on us or our peer groups place on us and so forth. Even, even in our own movement, someone's been around for a while. Oh, why aren't you initiated? What's going on here? Why aren't you doing this or that? The sincerity of heart to serve Krishna, that's our real wealth. That's the real thing Krishna wants to see. Krishna wants our love, however we can give it, even by offering a, a little something with devotion. That's what he wants to see. So that's really the essence of bhakti. We don't want to forget that. And especially, we don't want to become so discouraged that we lose our enthusiasm to serve and we can't even see the ways in which we can serve Krishna the best. That would be, that would be the greatest, greatest loss for us. Because there's so much all of us can do. And I've seen so many devotees do so many amazing things just by focusing on their inspiration. Not focusing on how big it will be, how successful it will be, but their inspiration to serve. And then you may know that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, if I could make one person Krishna conscious, I would consider my whole mission a success. So when we have inspiration to go out and do something, we should always think if one person benefits, that's success. I may distribute hundreds of books. If one person reads that book, that is success. If one person chants Hare Krishna, that is success. That's what we're looking at. 
Hare Krishna, all glories to Srila Prabhupada.